this is Strange Love After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and this week we're coming from Geiger Space which is the space that John Nastos and Clay Guyberson are recording for their project, The Duo Chronicles, that you can find at duochronicles.com. We're going to talk with John and Clay this week, but only after we hear this first piece, Up a Road, composed by Clay.
Welcome back. The song that you just heard was Traveler, which was one of John's pieces. This is John Nastos. This is Clay Iverson. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi, Katie. Thanks for coming out. To, well, thanks for letting us <laughs> in, actually. We didn't, you didn't have to go anywhere. Um, 
Why don't you tell us a little bit about the setup? This is the studio that you record the Duo Chronicles in each week? Correct. Okay, so why don't you tell us about well, your we, side? Yeah, when we do the elect electronic side, um, you know, this is where I have all my keyboards and stuff set up, and, and uh, the last couple of pieces we just played, you know, I'm using multiple keyboards connected together um, to kind of achieve a, a little bit richer sound, and um, everything is hooked up to some audio interfaces, which behind us, which run into the computer and allow us to record in software. It's basically it in a nutshell. So the noise isn't the noise. The sound isn't just coming, excuse me. The sound isn't coming just from one keyboard. It's layered. Not necessarily, yeah. I may be playing on one keyboard, but it may be triggering other sounds from other keyboards, or I can use, yeah, I can trigger different sounds in, in that way. Um, so versus when I'm playing the piano, I'm playing the piano, and the sound yeah. is coming from that. This can, you can, visually what you're doing, you may be triggering a bunch of different instruments at one time, and so. It's very um, cool. It gives you a lot of options, I guess, yeah. sometimes. You know. Now, you don't typically play this instrument during the recordings. You're usually playing your sax. That's right, yeah. But today you have brought the instrument that you were playing the first time Dr. Normal met you. It's true. Which is the iwi. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the iwi. It's an electronic wind instrument. And uh, it's essentially a saxophone, but it triggers a synthesizer instead of making a physical instrument vibrate. Mm -hmm. um, so when Clay plays keyboards, um, you know, we, we can explore different avenues between acoustic and electric. And for this show, we thought it might be appropriate to go kind of the tech angle and use yeah. the technology we have available. I appreciate it. So what, you guys, you know, both have gigs that you're working on. You have things that you do on your own. What prompted you to start Duo Chronicles in September? And how long were you thinking about it before it got started? It didn't take long from when the idea came about, I think. You know, it was a matter it came together in a matter of a couple of weeks, just kind of bouncing stuff off each other. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it has evolved, too, since we've, we've started, for sure, in both the audio and the video end of it. So, so by the time uh, this airs, I believe you guys will have 11 pieces out? Yeah. Yeah? And where did the impetus come from? Why did you decide to start this crazy thing? Uh, well, there have been a few projects. You'll hear about people like there's a Brazilian composer, Hermeto Pascual, that mm -hmm. did um, a composition every day for a year. Mm -hmm. And that is extremely ambitious. So we were looking to scale slightly back from that, but uh, still have a project where we could, um, we could grow and show growth and you know, be able to learn things from each other and present a lot of music mm -hmm. in a way that um, is a little different than, you know, just going to a club every week and, and allows us to do different things than that would do, do as well. Yeah, I think about six months ago I heard a profile on a composer who was doing like a 60 minute piece every day. A 60 minute piece? Uh, a 60 second piece. Oh god. Minute, yeah. <laughs> Scared the hell yeah, out no, of me. Yeah, that, that, no. So, yeah, 60 second. Let me okay. correct myself. <laughs> uh, that would be pretty insane. But, um, I'm so, sure someone's that crazy. You know, I hear ideas of different projects that people are doing, and those kind of lodge in your head. You know, you're like, "Oh, that's a cool idea. I should should remember that. Would be a cool thing to embark on." And so, um, when John was talking about this, it, it was like, "Oh, it triggered some of my past things I've heard." And mm -hmm. I'm like, "Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, one song a week. That'd be that's doable. We could do that." Yeah, <laughs> it's the perfect time to have you guys on because this episode will actually air as part of Napod Pomo, which oh, is yeah. something that Doctor Normal is doing. Uh, a podcast every day for the month, month of November and that's an ambitious undertaking as well. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how it started and how you've evolved in the last 11 weeks. Sure. Um, when we first started we had, uh, it was a very basic setup. We had two little flip, no we had one flip, one flip, HD. Uh, flip HD camera and we were using the, uh, the audio from the camera which actually sounded okay but mm -hmm. it wasn't fancy by any means. We had little tiny tripods to use. Uh, and since then, we've tried to up the production value very slightly each week. Um, so now we have two cameras. We're recording CD qual quality audio. Um, Clay has this array of equipment to make that possible all within Geiber space here. Um, and you know, I learn a little more about video editing each week. And so and there, actually, there are more avenues for distribution now. Um, originally, it was just on YouTube. Now you can download the videos as a podcast. Mm -hmm. um, you can find us on all your favorite social media outlets and things like that. Duo so. Chronicles on Twitter. 
Duo Chronicles on Facebook. Twitter, Facebook. Facebook RSS is... RSS feed. There's an RSS mm-hmm. feed, yeah. You can subscribe on YouTube. Um, Facebook is the medium in which we seem to get the most views. Mm-hmm. I think that's just what people go to now for their daily content fix. And well, so, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, cause them to have to learn anything new. They can just no, go yeah. and click and... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it appears on their screen yeah. without them it's having not, to yeah. go anywhere else. Yeah. yeah. So what do you have in plan? So you started off with just taking the audio off the camera, and now you're producing CD quality audio, and the, the video quality has gone up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you anticipate? How long are you going to continue this? Well, the, the goal is a year. A year, so um, September next year. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't yeah. necessarily rule out going longer if we don't you know, hate each other or something <laughs> by that point. <laughs> it uh, doesn't turn into like rock and stock and <clears throat> robots over here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have, Clay and I have both discussed a number of things musically that we want to try and, you know, we have a year to do it. So, mm-hmm. you know, if we started, if we had an idea, we could have 40 weeks to execute that idea. Uh, on the other hand, it does go faster than I thought it would. Yeah. It's, we're in, in the middle of week 10. And we'll definitely have some ideas about some multiple video tracks, maybe. Um, you know, layering, so layer, laying different tracks down at different times, and so there's things you could do to make it technologically more challenging, yeah. both on the playing end and also the post-production end, so it's just a, a matter of figuring out how to, how to get it to work right and, and uh, hoping it works right, I guess. <laughs> it works right most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> how many takes do you normally have to get? Before well, you're happy, we're getting we're getting we're gonna dialed in a little better. I'd say like usually if we bring in a new tune, we probably talk about the form, run it down, and then usually one or two takes. Yeah. Yeah. Some of we've done three, but usually we'll use the earlier takes. Yeah. So the compositions are your compositions. So far. Yours are yours so far. So yeah. far, but we'd like you know we we're not ruling out doing covers of other things. Mm-hmm. Um, just you know. Partially, initially started with originals just due to, to copyright issues and so forth. So. Always why you have to create your own content. It so just makes it easier. It's cheaper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, by the same token, we do have, uh, without having to deal with the uh, issues of licensing the song, there's the whole body of, cre- um, of public domain works mm-hmm. now yeah, that's available. True. And we release all of our performances under Creative Commons. Um, not the songs themselves, so Just there's the a little yeah differentiation there. But um, you know, I for instance, I'd like to bring in uh, an arrangement of some Stephen Foster songs, mm-hmm. and I think that'll also help broaden the audience a bit. You know, people that might be on YouTube searching for that song could find us that we wouldn't normally have the avenue to, you know, to connect with them. Um, you said in one of the posts are kept very brief, just generally a few sentences to talk about the piece that's going on. And you said in one of the more recent posts, um, jazz isn't always bright or pop. I can't remember the phrase. Fast, high, and loud. Yeah, fast, high, and loud. Effect, Thank you. Yeah. And and I appreciated that because some of the music that you're listening to isn't exactly what you'd expect when you hear, oh, it's a jazz duo. Um, but the, the, the Week 10 song sounded like a Christmas carol. In a very, I'm not saying that in a negative way, but I was listening to it and I was like, oh my gosh, it's holiday music. I'm listening <laughs> to perfect. holiday music. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, you know, I would only really call this project jazz if you have to pick a definition almost. I mean, I if don't you know have to that, categorize it. Yeah. Well, it's a pretty, it's a pretty broad, it can mean a pretty broad range of music and, and influences. And I think John and I both have a wide range of musical influences that are, that are jazz, but also go beyond that. So mm-hmm. it's natural that, that some of that's going to be incorporated in, in how we play and write music, I think. Sure. And I guess we have made a conscious effort to include certain things that people would expect from jazz. We had a blues, and we've had bebop, and we've mm-hmm. had Latin. More mainstream. And, yeah. But uh, we tend to kind of drift back to this um, sound that uh, sort of sounds like ECM, which is this European record label. Um, what they sort of typify is what we tend to gravitate towards, I guess. Mm-hmm. How long yeah. have you guys been working together? Mm. Well, that's a good question. A few years. A few years, yeah. 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 A few years. Yeah, I heard Clay play with uh, Dan Balmer, guitarist in this band that they have called Go By Train. 
Uh, and then uh, Clay's been faculty at the Mel Brown Jazz Workshop, right, uh, yeah. where I've worked as well. And you know, we've been sidemen together, and then we've led projects together. And it's the Portland jazz scene is small enough, in a way, like the tech scene, where if you're in sort of a a certain pocket of it, you're really going to know everyone, and you're probably going to work with them at some point on some project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, I think we're going to uh, take a little break and move over to the piano and get out the saxophone and uh, listen to what they can do over there. And we'll be back with you in a bit. Hi, and welcome to what I like to call Studio B here in Guyber Space. John and Clay are going to play another song for you. This one is Rhymes, written by John. Thank you. 
Thanks so much for joining us tonight. We're going to have John and Clay play one more song for you. It's called Prayer Flag, written by John in 2006. Have a great week. <laughs>